I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about Alone on Valentine's Day. Yeah, not fun. No, not, not a wonderful thing. Um, but it can be survived. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get to being alone on Valentine's Day, I just want to do a little introduction with a sonnet by William Shakespeare. Now, I thought he wrote plays. But as I went back and looked at it, I think it's the most famous love poem in English. I'm going to read you just a, couple, a few words from it. Okay. And it starts out with, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I think most people have heard that line at some point. Yeah. I hear it a lot. <laughs> well, you read, you read a lot. You read English. No, people tell me. Yeah. Oh, of course they do. Yeah. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life and if God choose I shall but love thee better after death okay what a beautiful description of love and it even has in it you know the ultimate separation he probably wrote it as a handwritten letter and she never talked that's to him again absolutely right yep that's right it was after a breakup and she never spoke to him again <laughs> That's, I mean, wouldn't that be the thing to inspire it somebody to write something so would. beautiful? Anyway, it's magnificent. She was avoided. Yeah. He was anxious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have the whole thing right down. <laughs> Breakups in the 1600s Breakups by Shakespeare. The, yeah. um, Is that when he lived the 1600s? I can't that's remember. That's good, yeah. yeah. Um, and now I'm going to go back even a little bit further to one of the sources of Valentine's Day. Now, I've checked out the sources of Valentine's Day several times, but the difficulty is St. Valentine is too shrouded in the mists of history. You can't really figure out who the heck he was. Um, so the next person who gets credit for having started all this is Geoffrey Chaucer. Now, if you're an English major, you know who I'm talking about, and if you're not, that's certainly okay. He wrote something called the Canterbury Tales in the 1300s. Mm -hmm. He also wrote an assortment of poems. And he has a famous, I'm not making this up, I couldn't, he has a famous poem called Parliament of Fowls, meaning a group of birds. Parliament mm -hmm. of Fowls. Uh, and he says, about a flock of birds who gather together in the early spring on St. Valentine's Day to choose their mates for the year. Mm -hmm. And I think he was talking about something literal, like, you know, when the swallows come back to Capistrano, mm -hmm. um, that I think that's what he was talking about. And he gets the credit um, for, for making St. Valentine's Day the day when everybody looks for their mate. Credit or blame. Credit However or, you look at it. However you look at it, yeah. So... If you're in love, Valentine's Day can be the very best day of the year. If you are alone, dealing with a breakup, it can be the very worst day of the year. Mm -hmm. And of course, you cannot get away from it. Every store, every TV ad, what you can buy, what you can do. Uh, I saw on the computer last night, there's even a Hallmark page you can look up that will give you professional suggestions of what to write to your lover. Wow. Okay. And now it's social media, too. And now it's social media, too. So it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if it's a subject you don't want to deal with, it can be extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, the balloons, the cards, you know, all that stuff. Now it's how do I meme thee? How do I meme thee? <laughs> let, yes, let me count the ways. And everybody posts their picture with their significant others. Right. So you're seeing all your friends and family yes. and their Yeah, and their significant others, yes. And you know what a lot of people do is they fake it. They send flowers to themselves and make it look like they're dating that. somebody. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. Or come in here, you. You're going to take a picture with me today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, there are special stressors, I think, for men and women. Um, for women, 
Unfortunately, in many cultures, women are made to feel like failures if they are not married by their mid-twenties. If they're not married well by their mid-twenties. Do you want to translate that one? If they're not married to a fairly wealthy man mm -hmm. by their mid-twenties. Um, oftentimes they are sort of shamed and treated as if there's something wrong with them. It, it, particularly in different cultures. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, there's yeah. a lot of ish pressure in like the Absolutely. India. India, um, mm -hmm. parts of Asia. And it's just... Oh a, yeah, Asia too is Oh big. yes, and it's more subtle here, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You hear people talk about what their mothers are telling them. You know, it's all still there. That's women in their 20s. Um, and the next decade brings a whole new set of stressors with the biological clock, mm. right? Um, so women get a whole lot of pressure. And of course, what happens to men when women get a whole lot of pressure? They pass it on to the men, okay? I'm really anxious about making this relationship last, mm -hmm. okay? So the men are going to feel the pressure and they're not going to know what to do. They run. Yes, that's exactly what they do. I said to somebody yesterday, if you want to scare a man half to death and see him do the 20-yard dash, talk about your biological clock, mm -hmm. all right? But it's something that, you know, you have to consider. It's real, yes, right? absolutely. So I think men are often left bewildered on Valentine's Day because they want to get something for the person they're seeing, but they have to be careful what they get because they don't want to give them any false messages that there's a commitment, and yet they want to do something for the girl involved, and oftentimes the best solution is to break up until St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> okay, when things get a little bit easier, all right? Um, and there are a huge number of breakups in the vicinity mm. of Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. um, I won't bore you with the statistics, but there are. Well, there's a lot of pressure. Absolutely, yeah. there's a lot of pressure, and it doesn't work well for choosing mates, this pressure thing. Mm. No. Unless you're part of a yeah. parliament of birds. Mm -hmm. So lots of times they break up until St. Patrick's Day. So all of the pressure and all of the cultural stuff impacts both sexes, but in slightly different ways, okay? Um, so if we're alone and feeling bad um, about being alone and wondering if there's something wrong with us, so wondering why we haven't found the right person, what is the first thing that most human beings do? Cry. That's, oh. that's number one, and that's most appropriate. What, they, else, what else do they do? They sit there and think, what's wrong with me? That's exactly mm -hmm. what they do after they've cried, <laughs> and possibly during the time they're crying. Yes, and one of the best ways we do that is to compare ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. um, look at all my friends. They're getting married. Um, they'll have children soon, and I'm not. Not only that, two of them have married men wealthier than anyone I ever met. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um and the suggestion as to deal with that is to take the focus off of the people you're comparing yourself to and go back to thinking about um, what are your strengths and think about that without judgment and think about how can I be the best person I can be? What are my goals, my desires, and my needs? Mm -hmm. All right. And you may share all of that of wanting to marry a wealthy man, and that's fine. But you may have some different goals and some different thoughts on the subject, mm -hmm. okay? Marriage isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. not everybody cares about money. No, mm -hmm. no, that's exactly right. And we were just talking about that the other day, actually, how not many people actually think, is marriage something that I want for myself? Right. I think many times people allow other people in their lives Absolutely. to make decisions for them that they might not even want themselves. That's right. And the culture says it in every way. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody you see on TV is part of a couple. Mm -hmm. um, and who are the biggest people who push people in the direction of marriage? We want grandchildren. Mothers. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We want grandchildren. Okay, so then we focus on everything that's wrong with us. Nobody is perfect. We can't expect to be. Although some people are raised being told that they have to be. Mm. Um, that's not fair. Um, so what you want to do again is put the focus back to you and think about and remember your most positive aspects and attributes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, but I think choice, as you bring up, mm -hmm. um, is the most important thing. Why do you have to be married and have children if you haven't thought about that as a decision of yours? Mm -hmm. you know? 
then we can easily get lost in the past and the future. You can find yourself going over several relationships that might have gotten to the point of being serious, but which in the end did not work out. It's easy to beat yourself up for that. Or you can sort of hide in the future and say, there will be the biggest wedding on earth and he'll have lots of money. And all my relatives will be happy and I can thumb my nose at all my friends who get married earlier. Mm. Okay, So you want to stay in the present to whatever extent you can. All right. And the last one is, the last of these suggestions, is that we tend to treat negative thoughts and feelings as if they are facts. And sometimes people in a state of, you know, discouragement or despair will say, I will never find the right person. If I did find the right person, he probably or she probably wouldn't like me. Um, you have to, again, remind yourself constantly that negative thoughts and feelings are not true, necessarily. Okay, so because you think it and because you feel it doesn't mean that that's truly what the future holds. So again, as Craig would say, you keep working on yourself and your future will unfold. Okay? So we don't want you to beat yourself up. That's the last thing we want you to do. Um, and the other thing is try very hard not to isolate. If you have mm -hmm. single friends who are going out on va Valentine's Day, go with them. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, don't sit home and eat that gallon of ice cream. You can wear a heart mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wear a hard mask. I like it. Yes, because you know everyone else will. I remember in the past we used to always call Valentine's Day sad days and it stands for Single Awareness Day. Oh, I never heard that. Mm -hmm. Single Awareness Day. All right. So me and my friends would always hang out. That's do wonderful. Because whenever we're distressed, most of us mm -hmm. human beings want to isolate and it's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. All right. So it's no one else's decision when or if you marry. Mm -hmm. But believe me, we're aware of the pressures that are on people. Yeah. Okay? And unless you want me to quote a few more poets, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be a tough day. Yes, it can. And it is a particular day that will remind you of a breakup or your Absolutely. ex. Absolutely. And maybe that your life isn't where you thought yeah, it would be. At this age. Yeah. or, or yeah. unhappy with where it's going, yeah. that's normal. And just know that you're not alone. I'm sure a lot of people in the comments will, you know, share their experiences. Yes, I'm sure they will. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this and you found it helpful. I hope so. And makes your day a little bit easier. Of course, if you need our help personally, you could just go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, read you some old poetry, please sign up. And Coach Victoria will be in the videos and training with us too. I'll be here and I hope that your Valentine's Day is a self-care day for you. Oh, and very nice. Sounds yeah. good to me. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, Go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.